you know, a lot of my deals don't even hit Facebook or, yeah. or, you know, because I have five good buyers mm -hmm. that I know are going to love this deal. Right. So I'm going to send it to them. One hundred. You know, those, because those I know your pockets. You those know? are my buyers. I know they're going to close. Yep. It's going to be easy. It's going to be quick. No headaches. I don't have to worry. And then if I blast it to Facebook and I get a hundred people, no, well, let's just say. 15 people that want to see it mm -hmm. and I don't know them. I don't know if they're going to close. I don't know if it's another right. wholesaler yet. You know, they're wasting my time. They might even, you know, you to do better in their business, but I also have to I don't know how to do it. So one thing I wanted to actually ask you, because you're a licensed agent, is there's this lawsuit that is going on, I believe it's in Minnesota. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I'll, I'll, I'll check on that and I'll have it on the screen on which state. But there's I forget a, what state it was. Yeah, but. Um, but there's this lawsuit going on where... The realtor. NAR. NAR, thank you. Where NAR is being sued and I... So that they can have the what they're saying is is uh, it's unfair for the seller to pay the buyer and the seller's uh, commissions. So, what is your opinion on that? Well, um, I think you know I'm not really the one to talk about exactly what's going on there, right? But I my broker knows it really really. She's that's her side, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's why they're getting sued on that. But that's something a question that they they've been talking about. Mm -hmm. It's so totally something different. But but my my opinion. I mean, if they didn't pay the buyer a commission, the buyer's agent a commission, mm -hmm. in my mind, you know, then the seller's agent, whoever it's like, whoever lists the house is gonna make the money. Right. It's still gonna be six percent at the end of the day. Right. It's not like it's going to go down to 3%. Right. It could be 10%. It's what mm -hmm. they agree upon. Exactly. But the customary percent that people think is, oh, it's 6%. Right. Right? And um, so that's usually what it is. And okay. people think, oh, I could sell my house without it. I could do this. Mm -hmm. I could sell it on my own. But have, you know, the people that sell their house for sale by owner mm -hmm. are not educated. They don't know what to do once someone makes the offer. Once someone makes the offer and you got to make sure that they're actually approved to buy it. Right. They actually go through the right steps. I mean, there, there's a there's an order that needs to be done. Of course, it's not rocket science, but, you know, there's good agents out there and there's not good agents out there. But um, my opinion is the buyer's agent should, you know, they're there to protect the, they're the yeah. ones working the hardest. Yeah. You know, they're showing people houses all the time and um, other people just list the house even though they had to get the listing mm -hmm. and they do other things but it's not as as hard as it is as a buyer's agent in my opinion and um, I think everyone I think it's good the sellers helping out the seller the buyers helping out the buyer side mm -hmm. and um, you know if it goes away you know we just move with the changes you know 100 percent we'll figure it out and i was actually listening to um a, a wholesale hotline episode um through pace morby and i one of the one of the people said like yeah if this goes through then it's just another negotiating tactic that's yep. it it's another negotiate okay we'll we'll pick up your especially if we still keep the high interest rates in order to incentivize buyers to come here um you know the biggest thing is is it may save money on the seller's end but it's going to put money on the buyer's end and it may drive drive prices down so in my opinion 
loan officers will just end up putting rolling it into their mortgage and and doing all that. Um, but I think in the end, it actually is worse for the consumer. Yeah. So um, that's just my humble opinion. Um, I, I think yes, I think everyone should pay their own commission fees, but at the same point, uh, you know, the way we have it, the way we have it structured at, at the moment is the only reason it's coming from the sellers is because that's where the big chunk of money is. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, you know, the seller's paying it, but technically, the you know, yeah, there's, you know, the house appraiser for 200, there's mm -hmm. 6% seller con concessions. You know, they go always, or, or commissions, they go always, you know, depending on the, you know, they go always try to sell for 205 or 210. Right. And it still equals out the same. It's just, <laughs> Exactly. It is what it is. So um, we'll move on a little bit to that. Um, tell me a little bit about some of the uh, tools that you use at the moment. Uh, we don't have to get into too much of the detail, uh, but I know you over the years, you've tested a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of different dialers. You've had a lot of different CRMs. You've had a lot of different. Um, so first, I want to know, when somebody's getting started, what should they use? And um, then when some they get a little bit more experience, what do you think they should go into? Right. So, great question. All right. When you're getting started, you use a piece of paper. Yep. Use a notebook. And um, you could get uh, files Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and have files, mm -hmm. have a lead sheet. And when you need to call it back on Monday, you put the lead sheet in the Monday file, okay? Every day, this is what I used to do. Every every day I look in the file, mm -hmm. go through it, and then I put it back, and then if, if, I don't, if I don't reach them, then I'll put it in tomorrow's file to call, all right? And I just kept doing that in my file folders. That's how I used to do it. And you could use a Google Sheet or Excel, Mm -hmm. That's another way of doing it. Um, to me, that is the easiest way. Sometimes I, I wish I even go back to that. <laughs> All right? That's the type of person I am. There's so many different CRMs. Podio, REI Simply is great, but it's like a thousand dollars a month. Um, I use Zap RE RE. It's a newer one. Um, it's a local guy. He's building it out for me. It's gonna be awesome. And once I got it rolling. Um, I will bring it out to you and yep. everyone else, and I'll have affiliate affiliate link to it. Yep. But it's you're gonna be able to do everything from it. Okay, the everything, name it, you can do it, mm -hmm. and and it's reasonable. That's why I switched over to this, and the guy is customizing it for me, and it's not that expensive. So, um, but do I need it? No, but it helps. It does help. Right? Yes. And then um, what else? I did the text blasting at a couple of different services. I like Mojo Dialer. I think I might have said that already. Um, um, texting is pretty much almost impossible now. With the, I think you got to opt in for me to text somebody. Mm -hmm. So I've never been a fan of that. Deal Machine is always something I've used in the past for driving for dollars. Um, I don't use that any longer. I have an affiliate um, similar thing where let's say I have some bird dogs out there. They'll fill out this and they'll go right into my CRM mm -hmm. and then I'll work it. And then when I, when I sell it, they make their money. You know, I give them a referral fee for yep. that. Um, you know, postcards or just handwriting postcards is a good, good way of doing things. I think that what else? What was that? Yeah, that. just any other system. What do you use? Um, so we've talked about that. That's all about how to reach the sellers. Um, but now, what do you use for your to reach your buyers? Yeah. So buyers, man, the key for buyers is organization. Number one, you got to yep. organize it. My first four years, I didn't organize it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, now that's another reason for my CRM. It, yep. it, it goes right into it. I got a link, send it out. If you're a buyer, 
Mm -hmm. It goes right in, into my system and I could text blast and email blast um, my deals, mm -hmm. okay? I am getting a website for my deals. That's what he's working on right now. So you can go to tcdealsinventory.com and you will see my own personal website just for my deals. That's why I have two names. One, TC Deals, my um, disposition side and Simple Home Buyers is my acquisition side. That's awesome. Okay, so. So, yeah, so Simple Home Buyers, that's what the regular sellers see. That's what everybody else sees. And TC Deals, that's what your buyers see. They know cool. TC Deals. Also, he does has a he does have a uh, a free Facebook group called TC Deals on TC Facebook. TC Deals Detroit, yeah. TC Deals Detroit, so you can be able to not only see his deals but other people's deals as well. Correct. Um, on there, so also go visit our what our Facebook page, uh, Metro Detroit off Metro Detroit Off Market Real Estate Group. Um, off Mar yeah, Metro Detroit Off Market Real Estate Group, um, and the link is in the description and we'll go from there so i uh, okay so camera ran out of uh battery or uh, there was a timer on there so we had to reset um so what i was saying is, is you told us all about your seller how you reach out to your sellers uh but how do you reach out to uh your buyers yeah my buyers um or how do I and how do I find them and things yes. like that? Okay. Yep. How do you find your buyers? How do you reach out to them? Like yeah. you know the organization things yeah, like that. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, being organized with your buyers list is important. Like I was, you know, four four or five years ago I wasn't organized. You know, now I'm really organized with it. I have a buyers link and I keep them all in my system, so I could text them all at once. I could email blast and I keep them in different like if someone doesn't like Detroit, I want it down to the science. The people that don't buy rentals in Detroit are not going to see a rental in Detroit. Right. Okay. And that way they don't just, you know, they'll just think I'm sending them Detroit stuff. Um, but you could go to meetups and find buyers. Number one, mm -hmm. there's a lot of meetups, probably six or seven a month around town in this area. All the way. There's a couple in Flint every month. There's one at Ipsy. There's, couple in Detroit, one in Troy, couple in Troy, maybe mm -hmm. three in that area. So there's a ton of meetups and there's a ton of buyers at these meetups. Um, so that's the way, and uh, Facebook is huge. I'm, you know, I'm an old guy. Facebook is for old people, <laughs> all right? But Facebook for real estate is probably better than TikTok and, and, and Instagram, in my opinion, for yep. wholesalers. Could be wrong, but that's what I'm used to. So if Randy posts a deal and it's a good deal mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people on there that says, you know, I'm interested, DM me, DM me asking questions, da da da. So you could write those names down, you could direct message them, see if you could get their information and get on a phone call. Schedule an appointment to call them. Why not? Find out if they're a good buyer or not. It's a five minute conversation. You need to actively be looking for buyers every day every day you know and 20 percent of your time in a day should be looking for buyers and 80 percent of your time you should be looking for sellers you know because that's the harder it's harder to find sellers than buyers yep right so no 100 percent. i i agree with that and i you know w even finding the buyers it, it, yes, it's harder, um, but they are more motivated to buy. They just have to be buy that buy at the right price. Is that right? Yeah, and and you could have a great buyer, but they might have four projects they're working on right now. Yep. So you got to make a note in your system to reach back out to them. Find out from them when should I call you back? Mm -hmm. When will you be looking? Contact me. The you know, give me a thirty day heads up when you're ready to buy again. Right. right, and then you could follow up with them also because they might not contact you. So, like I said, you just gotta treat them like a seller in that you know follow up. Correct. You know, be be right, be fresh on their mind, and um, um, just like I might have said, if I repeat, if I repeat myself, I'm sorry, but 
you should, um, you know, a lot of my deals don't even hit Facebook or, yeah. or, you know, because I have five good buyers mm -hmm. that I know are going to love this deal. Right. So I'm going to send it to them. One hundred, you know, those, because those I know your pockets. You those know? are my buyers. I know they're going to close. Yep. It's going to be easy. It's going to be quick. No headaches. I don't have to worry. And then if I blast it to Facebook and I get a hundred people, no, well, let's just say fifteen people that want to see it, mm -hmm. and I don't know them. I don't know if they're going to close. I don't know if it's another right. wholesaler yet. You know, they're wasting my time. They might even, you know, you, you know. Showing a, it's another topic, but showing a property at a house when a seller's there, there's a method of doing that also, you know. So that's Most definitely. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. Damn, what a hell of a view. So you know, I, I remember before you say, uh, and, you know, unfortunately the camera ran out and we just kept talking. We didn't realize it for about a half hour or so. Um, but you said you have to train your buyers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you, how do you train your buyer? And then how do you become a good buyer as well? Right. Well, yeah, training your buyers or becoming a good buyer is, you know, you do what you say you're going to do. Yep. You're going to close it. You're not, you know, oh, I got to get my, I got to inspect it five times. Mm -hmm. You know, when training your buyers is you send them a deal and they seem to be interested. I might tell them, look, you got a 24 hour head start. Yep. You know, if I don't, if I don't hear from you, if you're interested or not interested, I'm going to give you a 24 hour head start. Doesn't mean they have to buy it, but, because it's got to work for them. I don't get mad if they don't buy it because right. it just didn't work for them. But the bu buyers that buy a lot, I'm, I might give them a head start. You yep. know? And it's all about communication at that point. You know, wiring the money. Nothing's like going to, you know, getting it ready to close and you're waiting on the wire. My seller signs, I want the wire to be in the bank account so my seller could get their money at closing. That's very important. That is very important that the seller gets their money <laughs> at closing. <laughs> at closing yeah. Yes. They don't want to wait for uh, two days Nonsense. for the wire to come through because something happened with a, because uh, you're doing a 401k transfer or whatever the case is. It's may coming be. through an IRA. Uh, yeah. They're overseas and they, it takes a few days. We got to know that stuff ahead of time. Yep. And working with the right title companies. You know, there's a few good title companies out here. I've worked with m more than one. Right. So I remember, uh, you know, the thing is, is before we were talking about the tools that you use, and if I could repeat myself, I'm sorry, um, you know, but you are an agent, right? Yep. And so as a wholesaler, um you know, do you think we need to become an agent? Where do you think the Michigan is going to be on that? Yeah, I, there's all the benefits. You should become an agent. I tell people I'm an agent. I got a license. They can show them my license that I'm an agent. I don't mm -hmm. mind that. Um, I could list a property for somebody because, you know, you're a problem solver, and it might not be the right deal to wholesale. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, you you might do something else, so you could point them in the right directions. And not only do you have that, you can you have access to the MLS. You can see the history of the property. You can check the comps. You could do so much. Make sure the owner is the owner um, to see what when they bought it last and how much they paid for it. So there's so many benefits of becoming an agent if you're a wholesaler. I used to preach 
six years ago, you don't be, don't, you don't need it. Don't, yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. I never, I only use my license to check the MLS. Mm -hmm. Now I list houses. Um, and if you don't want to list, you can get a referral fee because you're an agent. Yep. So there's a lot of good things. Um, and eventually, you know, they're going to make you become an agent to wholesale. Eventually they will. You, yeah. you know, they're, they're doing it in other states right now and they're going to make it harder to become an agent you know now it's a simple 40-hour class mm -hmm. and the test is stupid it's tricky some people it takes them three four five six times to pass mm -hmm. and not saying they're not smart um it's just the way the test is yep um some people they pass it on the first time but it doesn't matter just take it get a license mm -hmm. you know if you, if you choose to, but yeah, I think it's definitely um, a benefit. Most definitely. Now, I'm not a licensed agent uh, because I don't do this full time. I, you know, so with that, I don't have access to the MLS. So I actually use PropStream. I down below there will be a link. It is an affiliate link, but I I. It is something that I do use because I don't have access to the MLS at the moment. Sure. So I pull my list from there, but I, I mainly get all my comps and get all my information from there like you would do on the MLS. Yeah. You know, uh, the thing I like about that as well, and I think this is one thing that I like about PropStream versus, say, some other, uh, other ones out there is it also shows the chain of title. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, some other re they just show the last person that bought it. Yeah. And if I see on a property like that, there's five quick claim deeds down. I know that closing is going to be a hassle. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, um, not saying I won't do it. It's just I know that it's probably going to take some time to close. So I might want to start title before I try to sell it. You know. Right. No so. propsing. Um, I've had it used it you know could for the list sake yep. you know there, there's good things like that but um yeah it's i guess it's it's not bad mm -hmm. but an agent being an agent having access to mls is the best 100 percent, and that, that is the best if you're an agent you know by all means that's the way to go yeah so um i use prop stream because i'm not an agent right. so uh you know with that you know, what do you think about, uh, you know, or with that, where do you, uh, do you have any rentals, flips, things like that going on right now? Um, no, I don't have any rentals, but I have had rentals. Okay. Nothing wrong with them. Great. You know, if you're, if you don't want to pay any taxes to Uncle Sam, you, you know, it's really beneficial to have rentals, right? Um, and I'm not a tax advisor. Talk yep. to somebody. And um, I have a dumpster. You know, I was telling you, I have a dumpster company. You know yep. that. I have 15 dumpsters. I think every, you know, those are my rentals. Every time I buy a dumpster, it moves. I make money. So, mm -hmm. um, so you know, but I could see, I used to have a lot of rentals. I could see getting in the rental game, mm -hmm. you know, just in Detroit, it's a different type of rental. You might get cash flow, but no appreciation, mm -hmm. and you're paying less money for it, hopefully. Right. Um, in the suburbs, you're paying more money, less cash flow, and you get some appreciation. Mm -hmm. So, there's a, you know, hopefully, you know, you get, you know, there's good and bad. There's give and take. There's give and both. take. If you don't know Detroit, don't buy in Detroit. Right. If you don't know the rental game, you know, partner up with someone or get somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, I do have flips. I'm working on a flip right now. We just sold one, and we, we're finishing up one. Um, so I try to, you know, I got a partner at my flipping side of the business, and we try to buy one, two, three, you know, at a time. Mm -hmm. no, no more than that. You know, when we're almost done with one, we want to be looking for another one. And then while we're selling one, we want to be finishing one. You mm -hmm. know, it's a, a cycle. All right, so... And in the meantime, you hotel yep. instead of flipping. A flipping to me is when you take a house and you gut it and you make it beautiful, right? right? 
that in, in, in it's a five six month process you know right. by the time you fix it and sell it and close it mm -hmm. you know type of deal but hoteling in the meantime we do those too where um, you know put a few bucks in there and you sell on the MLS and you make more money than if you would have wholesaled it so a wholesale is instead of um, wholesaling the deal okay you would actually take it down yourself so you actually own the property correct right and you put minimal work into it correct you don't, okay or not none at all but right. minimal to none right you might clean it out and make it look better cut the grass whatever and get it on the MLS because mm -hmm. there's more different type of buyers on the MLS investor buyers or even a homeowner might buy it. It depends right. on the condition, right? Um, you might fix a couple little things, for, you know, three, four thousand dollars in repairs. And, and if you would have wholesaled it, let's say you would have made seven or eight thousand dollars, and if you wholesale it, you might make fifteen to twenty thousand right. or more. You know, it just depends. Right. So you might get a bidding war going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're quicker deals because you get in and out. You could you could buy it and get it back on the market within two weeks. Or less okay yeah. awesome yeah within two weeks or less I mean that that is great turnaround uh, you know definitely better than a flip um, but you own the property so it's not necessary it's not a wholesale um, and it's not a flip but that's why you call it a whole tail yep so it's like retail yeah wholesale <laughs> so um, you know with that, I, I believe we were talking about, uh, you know, I did want to ask, you mentioned your dumpsters that you yep. have. How did you start that dumpster business? And, uh, you know, I mean, does it bring you residual income coming through? Do you run the business? Do you, or did you hire people to run that business for you? I run the business. I hire, I got a, I got a couple of drivers. Okay. I drive on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I drive in the morning sometimes. I drive at night sometimes. <laughs> Whatever it takes, you know. And um, you know, I I know a business broker, mm -hmm. and um, I seen that it was for sale, and I actually got it on a seller financing type deal. Wow. You know, I got a couple trucks and some dumpsters, and I bought a few dumpsters along the way. Mm -hmm. How long have I had it? Maybe since 2019, I guess. Maybe, yeah. So since 2019, 2022, almost four years, mm -hmm. probably four years, something like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's got its advantages. During COVID, I was glad I had it. Yep. It was great. I was an essential worker. <laughs> and, and one good thing, another good thing is I get people that want to, rent my dumpsters that are investors that are buyers. Yep. And then I could find out what they paid for that house, what mm -hmm. they're doing to the house. And there's that, that is another really good um, thing that came off of that. Awesome. So this is where, you know, he bought a business that complements his other business, you know, and not only that, but he uses negotiating skills. I, uh, you know, from wholesaling to negotiate with the business. So mm -hmm. you got on a seller finance deal. Did you have to put anything, any money down or very little? No. All right. So you just got a monthly payment every month and, you know, however long we don't need to go into the details of it. But uh, you, you can not only do this with houses, but you can do this with businesses as well. You know, uh, it's proof right here. Proof is in the pudding. <laughs> So, uh, you know, uh, with that, we have, uh, sorry, <laughs> I forgot about the other stuff we were talking about. What else do we have? Um, my... All right, yeah. we'll, we'll do a yeah, closing. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we'll do a closing, anyways. All right, so uh, coming back, thank you for joining us. Uh, how early did we talk about your 
here at the office. Was that pretty early? Yeah, that was early, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, that was early. Okay. Yeah. I all right. Thank you for joining us. I you know we're in this beautiful office here with Todd. He thank you for inviting us. I you know if you want to uh, get a hold of him, talk with him. I oh I know what we were talking about. JVs. What's that JV do? All right. Yeah, let's talk about that. All right. So I know when I work with you, I've worked with you, we've JV together. Um, by all means, the first deal that I did was a hundred, uh, $1,333. That was my portion. And I worked with you on that. That was, I, I, it was an awesome deal. It was, the deal didn't matter. Honestly, it was just a proof of concept that it could work. Uh, you were really good and you actually taught me everything I know. I believe I said that earlier in the beginning, but you know, for anybody else that does want a JV with you or, you know, like what's your process for JV? Yeah. Um, yeah. JV is a lot different than it's ever been today. Yep. So, you know, I, I don't mind JV with others. Some deals I can, some deals I can't, because mm -hmm. it's all going to depend. Because I might have a, a JV, I might have a deal that I got out there, mm -hmm. but I got two other people that are already were working together. Right. You know, one guy does the marketing, another guy does acquisitions, and then I dispo or or something in that nature. So we're splitting it three ways. There's no more room. We already got it down at the lowest that we could sell it. You know, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm not. A type of wholesaler that it's got to make sense all the way around right. i don't say every deal i gotta make 10 grand right it's just you made 1300 bucks right right yeah. some deals if they're fast and easy and i make two three grand i'm just as happy you know no big deal so depending on the deal depending on the person and the jvs i jv with people all the time mm -hmm. you know it's just every every deal is going to be a little bit different you know usually i split deals 50 50 today yep. it's no big deal you know even if i do more work than the other person mm -hmm. um but i just don't you know i get a lot of people that call me yep and they they call me to jv after they exhausted everything that they know and they can't sell the deal it's why because they got it too high right right and nine times out of ten so yep that those type of deals it was never a deal right so and unfortunately they didn't listen to your advice in the beginning and where you should have got the price or or whatever the case may be um they come to you and say you just have to tell them no unfortunately yeah uh because the thing is even though it's been out there it's been out there for so so much that everybody's seen it and if right. they were going to lowball, they would have lowballed already. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. So to refresh the marketing, there would have to be a substantial price drop, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, so, you know, with that, how can people get in touch with you if they do want to JV with you? But bring it in the beginning of the deal, okay? In the beginning of the deal. Yeah. All right? So how can we... Yeah, so the best number for... Me for, for me to reach out to me is um, 313-329-7877. Again, 313-329-7877. You know, that goes to my call rail number. That goes right to my cell phone. And once I get to know you, I'll lock you in my cell phone. I'll give you my cell phone number. Mm -hmm. um, this is just where I keep track of everything. But, um, yeah, that's the best number if you, you know, want a JV or mm – -hmm. If you have any questions, you know, text is the best way to reach me. If I don't answer, text me. And um, let's do business together. Help most, each other out. Most definitely. And if you ever do want to JV with me as well, my contact info is at the bottom, in in the bottom uh, description as well. So uh, I highly recommend working with this gentleman right here. He has a lot of buyers. I have a lot of buyers. We all do. We go around to these meetups and you know 
the biggest thing is is that the reason why we give our advice is because we listen to our buyers. Ain't that right? Yep. You know, we listen to the market change, and we ask our buyers every single either meetup or every center, single interchange interchange conversation with our buyers. What are you doing now? What's going on? What are you changing? You know, yeah, um, things like that. Right. You might you go to a meetup and say. You know, there's people that I know some buyers where I know they they they're not cash buyers and they don't use hard money, but they they got a really seamless process where they could they could do a quick loan. Mm -hmm. They don't even need an appraisal, right? So if someone needs an appraisal, that might be not be for some of my deals, right? Because we're not waiting for all that, you know. <laughs> so. It just depends. So different. Every every buyer has their ways of doing things, and it change. And like you said, it changes, it changes depending on the you know the climate, the climate, the market conditions, yeah. uh, what the Fed's done. What the, you know, everything's different. Yeah. It it could be because he, you know, one buyer just tweaked his back, so now he has to hire everything out when he used to do everything. You never know. It could be anything. You yeah. know. So, uh, you know, always talk to your buyers, always get updates on the market and where they're at. So, I, uh, you know, with that being said, uh, any link in the description, you know, we'll have his contact information. We'll, you'll have mine as well. Um, go ahead and reach out and we'll have to talk. I'm going to bring him on a little bit more. We'll make, do something more like this again and see what we can do. So. Um, with that, you know, let's all do deals together. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you've made it to the end of this video. And have a good day. Rock.